Hello YouTube, and do I have something interesting for you today? This is gas. This is high pressure gas. This is really high pressure gas. And uh, if we go a bit further, I'm going to set the temperature to the point where it should liquefy and you can actually watch the gas liquefy, which is kind of cool. Um, so what you got here is a molecular dynamic simulation. I'm going to play it backwards just for, for fun. Um, and the red ones are oxygens, blue ones are nitrogens, and it's basically just a physics engine. So the molecules, they attract each other. And other than that, they behave basically according to Newtonian physics, you know, hence molecular dynamics. Uh, length scales that you're talking about here, cool. uh, this is probably, a, you know, you're talking billionths of a meter, that sort of thing. And the time scale of the simulation that you're looking at here is also billionths of a second. So that's actually the drops breaking apart um, because I was playing the simulation backwards. If I play the simulation forwards, you'll actually see how you know, the, the, the formation of the interface is blisteringly fast compared to everything else. Anyway, so let's go to gas at one atmosphere. This is what you're breathing. So all of these corn, um, all of these trajectories have exactly the same number of air molecules in them, which is kind of cute. So you can actually see this is what one atmosphere air looks like. That's what you're breathing. And yeah, with the stuff that you're breathing, yeah, there's really quite a lot of space between the molecules. And if you see the odd cyan one in there, they're argon. Um, but the, all, all these things uh, as gas basically have the very similar properties. Anyway, so the well, first thing we're going to do is going to shrink it down by a factor of about 10. And at that point, it's getting pretty busy in there, you know. There's... Uh, there's not so much space between the molecules anymore. Um, and this is 10 atmospheres. So uh, actually, you can sort of see it. Um, yeah, Mark 1 eyeball says that if you halve the size of the cube here, you know, so I take all these molecules and rather than being in this size box, I halve the size of the box, you'll increase the pressure by a factor of about eight. Uh, so this is about eight times the pressure-ish, give or take. Uh, so 10 atmospheres is actually, you know, this is getting on for the limit of what humans can survive at. You know, at this point, these this really starts to affect um, your viscosity and all sorts. This is about the pressure, by the way, that the PET bottles, the polyethylene terephthalate pop bottles explode. And we've boosted it up again. So previously we were at uh, about, you know, 10 atmospheres-ish. Uh, now we're boosting it up to about 100 atmospheres. And as you can see, it's um, very, very busy now. But, you know, still nowhere near um, as dense as with water, um, not with water, with liquid. Uh, is Virtually all of the molecules don't spend any time touching each other. However, what I'm going to do now is these are all at room temperature. Uh, so... Um, there we go. I've I've changed the time step, which is why it looked like it sped up a bit. It didn't really. Uh, but I've I've lowered the temperature a lot now as well. So previously, um, these molecules, they the if you get two molecules and they stick together, or you get molecules that stick together like this, there's a force that holds them together, right? And if your molecule has enough energy to overcome those force, you know, sort of escape velocity, as it were, then it evaporates. And if, on average, every molecule in the system has enough energy to leave the liquid, that's the state of matter we call supercritical. It's basically a gas. Um, but it turns out this is already quite relevant for the Apollo 13 video because they, they dealt with supercritical, um, supercritical um, oxygen, but at fairly low temperatures so the the um this is what you breathe normally yeah and the apollo uh, supercritical gas was stored at about that sort of pressure yeah 
but uh, it, it needs to be above a certain temperature, which I, f I forget what it is, but it's fairly low. It's it's still like minus 150 Celsius or something. Um, however, uh, if I vent this and it cools down lots, you'll then get to this point here where it starts to condense. So let's take a look at the condensation. Um, this is the nice thing about doing simulations like this is you really can play God. Uh, so previously, the velocity of the molecules, it's basically the temperature, was about room temperature. Uh, now I've dropped it down, yeah, to the, to, to below the uh, liquefica liquefaction point of air. And so basically whenever the molecules bounce into each other, they stick to each other because they don't have enough energy to leave. Yeah, you see these little guys here? They, they don't have enough energy to fly apart anymore. I mean, you get the auto evaporation event, but, um, you know, nothing to write home about. But the cute thing is that the, there's no gravity in these simulations, by the way. They just sort of sat there uh, disembodied in space. There are, of course, repeating boundary conditions. So if you're wondering where, you know, things go off this side of the box, they rematerialize on this side of the box. But the cute thing is how uh, this guy actually condenses. So you'll get all sorts of uh, really cute things. So the interactions that uh, hold these things together, they only start at about this sort of distance. So you can see when they first start seeing each other, it's incredibly short distances. Um, so, you know, when, when you're at this sort of distance, they're blind. They don't really know each other's there. However, once they drift within a certain distance, the molecules on this side and the molecules on this side start attracting each other, and it goes boom. But the thing that's amazing is how quickly that interface um initially forms um and we can watch it so now you can sort of see there they're all drifting around well according to newtonian mechanics but now we're going to get these two fusing in the back and yeah it's quite fun the way they sort of um you know after a while they, they start recognizing each other's presence and eventually they'll sort themselves out and become balls. But you'll notice that the interface formed almost immediately. The last little bit of turning, oh, we're going to be fusing again. We, we've made a snowman. Uh, yeah, a very, very cold snowman. So this is, uh, like I was saying, it's like minus 200 Celsius or something. But that's so cool, the way that you get one of these oxygen molecules that just bounces backwards and forwards between the two droplets. Boom, boom, boom. And then the interface forms and boom, like that. And eventually this, these last two drops do actually just, there we go. You see what I mean? They, they don't feel each other until you get really close. And then they, they, it's like they're tied together by a gentle spring. So that pulls them in for the last little bit. Let's take a look at the last two droplets merging. And yeah, yeah, they, they, they've seen some. And yeah, I, it takes a, a while to, oh, let's come back to the beginning. Okay. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, these will probably actually make it... Well, these these well, these are necessary for the Apollo 13 video. But it's cute that, you know, you've got all your states of matter here. You've got your, uh, you know, your liquid. What I'll do with this eventually is once it's all equilibrated up in one big ball, um, which it will have done by today, you know, the, these take a few hours to run. Um these things uh, so to get it all to condense down to this ball eh, probably took overnight or something um, but once it's finished what I'm going to do is I'm going to play God again and I'm going to give all the molecules in this enough energy to leave
because I genuinely don't know what's going to happen. Um, I, I, in essence, I've made it instantly super critical. So it's conceivable that what you'll get is just evaporation from the surface, or it's conceivable that it's sort of going to explode from the middle and break up into lots of little fragments. But the one thing that it won't be is this in reverse. You won't get it breaking into droplets and droplets and then um, yeah, all evaporating. So yeah, the, this is playing the simulation backwards and yeah. It, it's formed a sort of um, well, percolated structure and that's, that's amazing how quickly it condenses. Yeah, you, you see the change in the time step there. Um, the, the reason I changed the time step is this is minus 200 or something. So the atoms are actually moving very slowly or the molecules are moving very slowly. Here, they're at room temperature. So they're actually moving eh, fairly quickly. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do today. Um, if you enjoyed that, drop a thumbs up on it. Um, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.